In today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can use these Behringer control surfaces to create the ultimate audio mixer for vMix. Don't miss it. So before we start, there's a couple of quick settings we need to check, and we'll start with the X-Touch. The first thing we need to ensure on this is that the interface and the control mode are set to the right mode. So if we have a look, so what you're going to want to do is hold down the select button on the first channel, and yes, that's a dog, uh, and then <laughs> turn it on holding the select button down. Great, and now on here it will say on the first LCD, it'll say mode, and you want to scroll until it says MC. You don't want HUI, that's the wrong one. And this one, this one seems to recently change. They seem to now be shipping new machines from the factory in, in MIDI mode. And you see the ports on the computer, but it never you never get anything back and forth. So you need to ensure that this is in USB. If these are correct, so this is MC and this is USB, we can turn it off and boot it back up and it will be ready for us to use. The second thing that needs to be checked is that the uh, vMix, if you're running vMix on the same machine as Central Control, you can't have the MIDI ports open in vMix. So to check that, we will go over to vMix. This is my project. We'll find out a little bit more about this in a second. But we need to open Settings. And then firstly, we will go to Shortcuts. Here, and then you want to go to MIDI settings and just make sure that X-Touch is not enabled in here. And then I'm going to do activators, enable devices, and make sure again that it is not checked. Let's actually have a look at my vMix project and see how this works. So I've just got, I've got eight inputs of audio here, and these this is everything that I'm going to need in my show. And if I turn it up, it sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, and then I've just got color bars and the Sistine Chapel of websites, centralcontrol.io. So that's great. So we've got a vMix project ready to use. So let's open Central Control. Now, yours probably won't look like this. Yours will probably look a little something like this when you first run it, if you've never used this before. Uh, we are going to load the templates. And you can download these by following the link in the description. So let's go load project. And I've saved them here. They're in this folder. No, they're not. I lied. They are in this folder. Uh, there's mega xtouch vmix.control and there's xtouch vmix.control. This will, what this is for, will become clear shortly. But for now, we're just focusing on this. So if we open this, and then first thing I need to do is, and you might have noticed it actually jumped into life because this was already correct. Um, this is important if you are running central control on a machine that isn't uh, the machine that's also running vMix. In this case, it is, so I can just type localhost here, and it will use the loopback driver so we can connect on the same machine. However, what you can do is you can control a vMix that's just on the network, same network as central control. Or if you set things up correctly with port forwarding, you could even control one running somewhere else remotely or even in the cloud. If you want to know more about that, I have got a video on this channel about running vMix in AWS and controlling it with central control. But for now, we're just running locally, so I'm going to check this back on. And this it should be easy. This, If everything's connected and working, this should be fine already. But if it's not, you just need to select the right ports, X-Touch, X-Touch in this case, turn it on. If you get an error message down here about um, unable to open the ports. It's probably because you've got it open in vMix, as I mentioned earlier in this video. So now we've got this connected and working, let's actually have a look at how this works. So if we have a look at the X-Touch, you'll see we have eight faders here. We have the VU meters. Uh, we've got the displays, and it's all working. So let me talk you through it. So let's start at the top. At the very top, we have the encoder. And on this encoder is the gain control. So if I start to increase this, you'll see the signal gets completely clipped. And bring them back down. Uh, and then you have the solo button, so we can solo channels, solo multiple channels, no worries. Uh, and then the mute, the mute kind of works backwards because in vMix it's um, you you don't have a mute button, you you have like an on and off for the channel, so it works backwards. But you'll if you're used to vMix, this will make sense to you. 
Uh, and then on the record and select buttons, I've left them free. Uh, you could use these to even switch cameras, whatever you want. But this is a template, so build off it and make it your own. On the faders, we have just, well, what do you expect? Like it controls the channel level smoothly. And the cool thing is, is the really nice thing about the X-Touch is that, of course, it has motorized faders. I bring it down here, it follows. And this is great if you have multiple people running um, vMix, because if they make an adjustment in software, the next time you grab the fader, it's not going to wildly jump up or down. Uh, and then the VU meters, which show you a, a visual representation of where the levels are. And this is really nice because if you you don't even need to be looking at the vMix software mixer now, you, you've got a pretty good idea of, of what's going on. And then that's just repeated for all of the channel strips. It's great. Uh, and then this is, let's not do that again. This is the master. Um, yeah. And then the cool part is, is if I just bring one of these into program, I have set the um, transport display here to show how many, uh, how long is remaining on the uh, VT timecode, so the timecode of the program input. But you can change this. If I just go open this device mapping, we'll go to display. Transport display, get source timecode. You could set this to be preview instead, or we could go from remaining to elapsed. So it's it's completely personal preference. And you could also use this to show uh, the recording timecode or replay position. Entirely up to you. Uh, and then on the channel strip displays, I didn't talk about these yet. The uh, top line is the input title. Uh, and this will update in real time. And even if, so let's say, even if I don't edit the title, if I like swap the input order, we swap this over, you'll see that these now flip around. And this is Boney M, Mary's boy child. And now on, on two, it says blood sugar. And then on the uh, bottom line of these, it just shows the level in vMix in decibels. So you again, it's really nice because you can't really visually see that in vMix uh, unless you mouse over. So it's nice to be able to just like at a glance kind of gather where all your levels are at. So I pretty much left the entirety of the right side of the controller blank, but there's all sorts of stuff you can do with this. And to demonstrate that, I've just made a simple list input here. Um, pull this up preview. Uh, it's just got a few videos in it. I don't know who that is. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll just use the transport section on the X touch here just to you know control the. Um, the list. So I will go open central control and we're going to select the X touch and then click device mapping. And then I'm going to turn on this jump to control option. So now if I press this button, it finds the control for me and selects it. And we're just going to find the list previous command. And yep, that's our list. Fast forward, we're just going to do list next. And yep, that's right. And then we'll press the stop button. On the stop button, I want to use pause input and we'll select the list. On the play, you know, I'm just going to use the play input. And then on this encoder wheel here, we're just going to set this to uh, simply scroll through that list. Okay, uh, and if we bring this up, turn off auto next. Now you'll see the Play button has illuminated and I can just play, pause, easy. And then if I press next, you'll see because this is in program, as we saw earlier, we now see the remaining time for this VT. And I can even, if I stop, I can select through the list using this encoder. And um, if you're into instant replay, I've actually seen people map, control all the audio in their show here, and then they'll map like an entire instant replay section using the encoder wheel, and then show the replay time code on the screen. The possibilities are endless, but just a few ideas for you uh, to get you started. So what happens if you have more than eight channels of audio to mix? Well, you could use layers, and layers are like pages in central control where you can have you know, page one is input one, inputs one through eight, and then page two is maybe nine through 16. That's great. There's a video about that on this channel. But what we're going to do today is show you how you can add an X-Touch extender to give yourselves 16 physical faders that you can mix on. So let's set that up. I have, great. But I've bulked out on our vMix project, and the way I've done that is just by adding the same tunes over and over again. So now, 
it sounds even worse than it did before. Right. So let's, once again, let's open central control. Here is our project from last time, still working great. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click load project. And this time we'll select Mega X Touch VMix. OK, so this is just loaded. And again, I'll check my settings. Localhost is fine, as we said, because we're on the same machine. X Touch Extender is set to the right MIDI port. It's just got EXT at the end. Xtouch Universal is set to the right one. Now we've got this working, let me talk you through the new layout. So now it's 1 through 8 on this and 9 through 16 on this. And it just kind of works better having this off to the left rather than having 1 through 8, big gap, 9 through 16, and then master in the middle. It'd be weird. So yeah, I've just got 1 through 8 over here. Works exactly as it did before. So let's take a look at vMix. I've opened the mixer panel just so we can see this a little bit easier. So as I said, 1 through 8 are over here, 9 through 16 are over here. And again, if I dare the master enough, is there. And that's that. I have a full setup ready to mix a show. Now, everything we've done in this video, it's all been over USB. And I often get asked, can we use the Ethernet ports on these devices to connect to central control? You can. If that's of interest, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about that next. Be sure to head over to the website and download the free 30 day trial. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos on this channel if you'd like to learn more about central control and I'll see you soon.